You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 26, 2022 meeting of the LaPorte County Redevelopment Commission. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. Good evening. I'm going to call the LaPorte County Redevelopment Commission meeting for Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. to order. If everybody please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, like the light nod in it. Well, hey, Joe, got a correction for the agenda, so give me a chance. To... Yes. Roll call, Mary Jane. Present. Turn your mic. Present. Joe Core, present. Rich Rosinski. I am here. Terry Larson. Present. Scott Cooley. Present. Connie Gramarosa. Present. Michael Rosenbaum. Present. Jan Ryberty. Present. Mr. President, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, approval of tonight's agenda. I would like to make a motion to approve the agenda with the following correction. Under number 10, new business, I'd like to put down the Northwest Indiana Form Ready Grant Agreement, which needs to get signed, so we want to discuss it. Any other changes or alterations? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Public comment. Public comment is now open. Anybody from the public would like to speak? Seconded Who seconded it? Who seconded it? Um, I, Joe did. Joe seconded Joe or Rich, I yeah. don't know. I seconded it. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. Anybody from the public who would like to speak? Anybody from the public? Thank you. Public comment is now closed. Communications, Mary Jane? Communications for the month, the auditor's request for the treasurer's report, the Harold Argus for the claims and allowance publication, D&M pay request number six, USI pay request number six review, Meridian title, the 421 payment from the bond, um, picked up POs from the uh, auditor's office for the president's signature, prepared DM, DNM pay request number five to the bank, prepared the Sept October automated POs at the auditor's office, the ready grant award agreement, the county assessor tax appeals, they sent the third quarter tax appeals, which were forwarded to Matt and to Sender and Company. And then we prepared an invoice to the Michigan City Water Department for the 421 project. That's the end of the communications. Thank you. Minutes of our last meeting. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions on the minutes? Hearing none, all, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Treasurer's report, Mary Jane. <clears throat> the balance in the um, TIF accounts after today's payments, KIDC $61,347, 421 allocation area number one, $239,278, 421 allocation area two, zero, 39 North, $88,995. The end of the Treasurer's report. Thank you. What's your pleasure? Motion to approve the treasurer's report as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Claims. <clears throat> in the KIDC TIF, MCR Partners, October Professional Services in the amount of 3000 Thomas & Associates, September Professional Services in the amount of $747.50, Herald dispatched legal publication claims in the amount of twenty-five sixty-five. Friedman and Associates October legal services in the amount of fifteen hundred for a total of fifty-two hundred and seventy-three dollars and fifteen cents. Motion to approve. Right. Motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions on those? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? 
Next one is the 421 number one TIF, Thomas and Associates, September Professional Services in the amount of 747.50. MCR Partners, October Professional Services in the amount of 2000 for $2,747.50. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, thank you. Uh, 39 North, MCR Partners, October Professional Services in the amount of 1000 Motion to approve. Okay. Second. A motion to second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Those opposed? Total claims tonight is $9,020.65. Uh, I know. It's not the way you've got that on there, I know. 421 uh, DNM Excavating. Contract bond proceeds. Um, we have a pay application for uh, DNM excavating the amount of four hundred and sixty-four thousand three hundred and two dollars and eighty-two cents, and Tiemann's land surveying in the amount of five hundred dollars for a total of four hundred and sixty-four thousand eight hundred and two dollars and eighty-two cents. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any questions on that one? That's to come out of. That's to come out of the bond proceeds, not from the regular general accounts Correct. that we just mentioned, because there's not. A, right. I just want to make sure everybody knows. Yep. Correct. Coming straight from the bond. Great. Right. Sounds good. All in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank you. Uh, old business, four twenty one I ninety four Matt Reardon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There is, a, I don't have a lot to update on the project. John does. I know that they're moving through. We keep getting uh, process, uh, progress is moving through, and um, uh, I do have a little bit of, of news to report. It's uh, it's nice when cooperation occurs. We received our two hundred fifty dollar two hundred fifty thousand dollar contribution from Michigan City Water, and the board took action last night. And uh, Chris Johnson was in touch with our office today and said, I have a check for you, and that's, uh, well, that was part of the financial um, match that we put together for the project. So thanks to Michigan City and, uh, and their uh, city council and, and the water board, actually, who, uh, who approved that. And uh, again, uh, I think they get that having more customers is a, a good thing for your utility. Having less customers, probably not so. And I'll turn it over to John to talk a little bit about uh, up project updates and where we're at with that. You say 250. Good evening, John Smith with the USI Consultants. So DNM did the three directional bores since last month's meeting. One was at 950, it was 200 feet. Uh, one on 300, they, it was a struggle since it was 420 feet to pull that through. And then uh, they did the other directional bore yesterday along 421 underneath the ditch. So they did 1,200 feet of water main. Uh, they did roughly close to a thousand feet of sewer since last meeting they did get they are getting two loads of water main this week uh the nine loads left so the water main is starting to trickle in that they've been waiting on um there is a it's down to a 50 50 chance of getting the road paved on 950 this year so we're trying to get the water department to get the taps done and they were supposed to start last week and they haven't yet and DNM just got their sanitary taps in yesterday, so they're going to start hitting that heavy next week. What's the deadline? Or are they just watching the weather? It'll be Wreath Rally is going to close their plant down Thanksgiving week, so we have five weeks. A little bit of time. Yeah. Yep. The sanitary pipe that I see you're doing on 421 headed south on the east side of the road, is that how you're tying in the, uh, the truck stop? No. Or is that just an extension? That's it, part of the deal? Yes. Okay. And that doesn't tie into anybody at this time? No. Okay. The truck stop on the other side, there's already a line over. There's a manhole right there in the okay. corner of the How harbor. did they connect? Going down? Well, we have to go underneath 421. There's a casing there, but AT&T needs to relocate, and we're struggling. Nobody will contact us, and uh, we've made multiple calls, and uh, they've been a struggle. Yeah. So... Right. We're gonna keep on keep on them. I've been pestering them as well. Okay. So. Understood. Yeah. But you'd hear from them if you cut it. Bitch, <laughs> been tempted. Rogers. Eve Rogers. He's the public affairs lobbyist oh. for 
AT&T. He works down in Indianapolis. His responsibility is the state of Indiana. And he is a LaPorte County got president. Former LaPorte County. Okay. All right. Never mind. Yeah. So we do have 500 feet left of water main to get the rest of it down 950. And then that'll be done next week. Then they got a pressure test and everything. So that'll take another week. So I'm still hoping it gets paved. You know, right. a lot of it depends on the weather. Definitely. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. KIP update, Matt Reard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The KIP update will deal, will uh, not deal with, we'll talk about the grant award, which congratulations. And um, those of you who have been actually participating on this committee um, can feel some sense of reward. It's been uh, a, a pretty good effort to get uh, an additional funding from the state and we've got this in the way of the Ready Grant program. And um, I'd like to boast a little bit. I think we're the first construction project that's been awarded. I think that has a lot to do with the level of organization that those people who are participate on this board have taken the time to do. Um, I'd also like to, uh, you know, the forum hustled up pretty good in, in, in trying to organize this. They have $50 million in ready funds to distribute, and I think they had over half a billion dollars of requests. So uh, we made our way to, to get there. Um, just some anecdotal discussions not, not, not uh, to be uh, finalized yet. We have two transactions that are in process right now, a letter of intent for 154 acres, for a pretty sizable project at Kingsbury, normally I don't, I wouldn't bring that up, but it's something that the uh, the developer wanted to make you aware of, and and make the not only you but um, the plan commission aware of that they're they're trying to move quickly on a project, which I, I'm always encouraged by that. Um, the other thing, and I guess we can talk about it during the grant agreement, was I appreciate the participation from JBC Rail and the participation from Limborg on the grant without without their financial participation we wouldn't have received the funds so that's part of the grant agreement that's all i have on uh, kip great how about 39 north 39 north i have an update on the uh, property owned by uh, Anacostia, we had a project Tony and I were working on for quite some time. There was a letter of intent. It was a big building and a big project, and the zoning was right, and it didn't work out um, at this time, so it's back on the market. Um, and again, I know that 39 North is trying to solve the, the riddle of the water tower still with uh, accessing federal funds. And, uh, you know, again, I think the site's much more marketable um, if we're able to solve those issues, and I know that both parties are working uh, concurrently to do that. Um, it's also my understanding that um, the senior center is, is uh, satisfied some of the, uh, not some, um, some of the fire suppression uh, questions at the location and they're likely to move forward with the project. Um, uh, Randy, would you like to talk any more about that? So right now it's, we're, we're waiting on an agreement with the city of LaPorte and um, Center Township in the um, housing development out there okay so but we've had ongoing meetings with all the different people and i think they finally presented a plan uh, with using the pond water and different things and the current water situation that's out there mm -hmm. and uh with the idea that whenever the water tower or something does get fixed up that the system would be switched over to that at some gotcha. time so it's a uh, it's a work in progress but i think i think they're very close to uh Hopefully, having everything. It's a pretty up. substantial investment. I want to say, I don't know, ten million dollars. I think might have been a little bit more. more, more than that. Yeah, it's been a while, and, but yeah. that's yeah. you know progress out there in spite of ourselves, I guess. Right. So let's. Uh, I think the the more cooperation and collaboration we have uh, with uh, overlapping jurisdictions, the better off we are. Definitely. How about the thirty five ninety four? How about it? So the um, the recent legislative changes by the City of Michigan City via ordinance has uh, stipulated that anybody who taps into sanitary is required to sign an annexation waiver. Now, this body knows that we have no standing in that decision. It is an independent decision of the private property owner to 
be annexed. And so it's the responsibility of the city to ask. But uh, conversely, um, we had a planning effort done that extended the utilities similar and using the model of 421 and 94 done on behalf of the city of Michigan City. Let me make that clear. Done on behalf of the city of Michigan City. And absent the participation of the water department, the cost for not only design, but construction was incurred by the city. We had a meeting with the municipality last week. We explained this plan has been in process since 2019. I believe the cost was incurred by us. The cost was incurred by the county. You said the city. Yeah, sorry. You no. said the city. I was like... Sorry, let me correct that. Ooh, yeah. Well, maybe I was thinking that's how it short, should have gone. Short of the, <laughs> short of the water department, yeah. the city hasn't yeah. put in any. I was thinking that's how it should have gone if you're going right. to do annexation. Right. So, uh, again, we have no part in annexation. It's all friendly annexation. So we had a meeting with the city. It appears that the city administration no longer has the authority to determine uh, what the water and sanitary boards do. I don't, I don't know if that's true. There's some litigation pending, or not litigation, uh, some uh, a request for determination sent to the Secretary of State's office about the ordinance. That fact notwithstanding, we have a plan, we have a, 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 a promise of funds from the county and a $20 million project in the balance. So I'll be attending the Michigan City City Council meeting Tuesday night to address the plan, the plan issue, um, the, you know, the mathematics of annexation versus not, the impacts of annexation on tax increment finance, the county issuing debt or doing debt, the impacts of annexation and their requirements for people to do that. And I'm hopeful that that is resolved in short order because not only is the 421-94 interchange project development impacted by this decision. There are two other ongoing projects currently in and around Michigan City that will be directly negatively impacted by this policy until it's sorted out. So hopeful to get some guidance. These other projects are they're in the county. Um, these are ordinances and they need to be rolled back if they aren't. Um, again, certainly with some uh, acknowledgement that the city is uh, aware and concerned about what's happening on their borders. Um, I, I think as a body that, that I can say this, uh, that the LaPorte County Redevelopment Commission focuses on what's, what, what's within its purview. And uh, we certainly make sure and take all due course and effort to contact those professionals in Michigan City or LaPorte or Westfield to contact them when and if a project is occurring. And 421 and 94 is an example, and 35 and 94 was done no differently. Um, Matt, um, as, as this board has gone on record, I think very supportive of this project, and we know the economic development impact is huge. I was not able to attend the meeting held at the mayor's office. I was in Indianapolis. Are you indicating that there is going to be an attorney general's opinion sought on this dispute between? That, that's what was conveyed. Really? Yes, mm -hmm. that was uh, party, that occurred. They've already, they're waiting. They said it takes 45 days. I mean, mm -hmm. so they've already got it in. Yeah. So this is between sanitary and water versus. This is between the the mayor, mayor's office and the council. Council. Right. Okay. The old mm -hmm. mayor sues the council. That old that old game. Uh, but but it, there was there was also some discussion that they might be tweaking the ordinance that the council passed. The the council president told me that nothing's different. All they did was they passed an ordinance that if if you tie into the sewer or water that you're waiving your you can't monstrate against the you know um, annexation. annexation. Right. So they're going. There's nothing different. The administration says that's that's not the way it reads. So, we're, so that's why um, with Matt and I and, and Rich there, we talked about like we told them we're going to go to the um, yeah. council, yeah, and we're going to get approval from the council. If their council's the one that we need to talk to, we'll go talk to the council, right. and then we'll be back. So, um, but it's it's an ongoing talk with the uh, city administration. Mm -hmm. So we're we're keeping the door open there. Yeah. And then we're going to go to the council and um, get their blessing. Just kind of knock one more. Yeah, we just want to. We, we, you know, 
Um, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. We just want to make sure we're very clear, um, you know, clearer. Um, you know, this was a public document and process that, that this body went through. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you um, about not knowing or I didn't know um, right. that um, that there there will be financial ramifications for this project. It was pointed out in the meeting with the city that the, that it's the county putting this money in. There, the uh, it was not. Um, the, this was not a revenue generating proposition for the county today and that the investment was being made in the extension of utilities for future growth and development along 20. So um, I think that that message was conveyed loud and clear. Um, so I'm just going to run you through a quick scenario. So let's say we do the project, we go forward, the city annexes, is the city has an additional increment of taxes. We go from $1.90 to $2.90. So um, while um, I would say, you know, it, it's my recommendation if there's outstanding debt that any new increment generated because the city annexed somebody else or they voluntarily did that, that the city pledged that new increment and into the project. Now there's case law, and I'm sure Shaw can talk about it. Uh, my friends over there in Maryville and Lake County got, or Hobart and Maryville got in a little tussle probably 20 years ago in the same situation. Maryville, or Hobart annexed property into the county. They had a TIF district set up, and uh, I think it was a, it was not a pleasant situation for quite some time. And um, anyway, there's it happened. It's happened before. So. I think we need to make that clear to the city of Michigan City. It's fine to annex, but if we have financial obligations outstanding, any revenue generated by taxes go to the project, or or you can pay for the project. Well, it, it would it would kind of, I'm saying this nicely, it would kind of suck if they annex it and we're still making payments on the sewer that you they have think. in the ground. So you know think. that 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 would suck. Yeah. So so yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't like to suck. So and that's the legal term, gonna, Mr. Okay. Yeah, it is. So. We're going to try and avoid that that area yeah. of what's going on. So I'll be there Tuesday to discuss um, with with you know the the unintended consequences of an ordinance and what that means because it's this this right. project and another project right on the heels. So. Anyway, that's the uh, uh, that's the update at thirty five and ninety four. I don't know. The council had approved moving forward with um, the kind of the route analysis. I would recommend that we hold on that maybe for a little bit longer until we get you know the uh, we hear from we get the approval whatever that looks like from the city of Michigan City to do the project, and then they can go out and work with water and sanitary and identify the route, and we can do that. Does that makes sense? Makes sense. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Thank you. Next item is new business, the um, NWIF Ready Grant Agreement. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as this board will recall, or those who participate, we've been working on KIP for quite some time. Um, the IEDC was uh, working with uh, Shaw and, and the former Chairman, oh, what's his name, Shaw? Jim Schellinger. Jim Schellinger, yeah. Um, we wore him down, and he he participated, uh, uh, not he, but IDC to the tune of a million dollars. So we were able to get that track built. We, we uh, went through a public process to identify a switcher. That was done. That was JBC Rail. They did a good job. The project's built. The rail's in, ready to go. Um, both JBC Rail and on the other side of the bridge, um, is uh, Ed Limborg. They said, boy, it'd be great if you guys could do the bridge. We sat out, we sought a ready grant to pay for that, and congratulations, we got it. There's matching requirements in the grant. Um, at one point, we talked about the use of, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, another federal funding source, Mitch, what is it? ARPA? No, not ARPA. We could use ARPA. Um, safe streets, I don't know. Anyway, we had a matching problem. We couldn't use match, federal match, and federal match, but we could use local dollars. So plugged into the grant and program then would be the use of local dollars to do the roadway projects out there. That's been talked about for, I don't know, let's say 10 years, how to do that, what to manage, how to, how to get it going. Um, we're still waiting a definitive from the title company on who owns what and where. They're kind of scratching their head. There were subsequent sales that occurred that were embedded into these uh, deeds, so they're really 
kind of got a little more than they bargained for, but we're getting to the bottom of it. So we know that we're paving or spending funds on public public property or we have permission from the private owners to do so and then have agreements for maintenance other than that. That amount is $2 million to be done down the road. There's trackage that needs to be finalized and built to meet the bridge together. Limborg has agreed to his piece. Um, JBC Rail has agreed to his piece. So what happens when this is done? You got an open wide connection from CN Railroad that comes in through Limborg's property into KIPP, can go all the way around. And um, I'm going to ask that the commission consider the following request that was made by JBC Rail. Um, they indicated that they would like they would like to put in the CSX switch, which is at the other end of the park. And they said they would request a two and a half to three year payback. Um, to do that. And I said that was an item that I would discuss with the RDC. Um, and if they're willing to front fund the project or, or we could figure out how to front fund the project and the contract or the guarantee of the payback is subsequent and, and is desirous to the board, I recommend we do it. Then we have done both, both contacts. And what's the switch talk? What's the tag on the switch now? I mean, you know we what? talked years ago. It's it's 400-ish thousand. I don't have the specific number from JBC, but they know what the number is. And I said, hang on to that. Let's get to the bridge okay. first. Okay. So that's the, uh, that's, that's the update at, at, uh, in, in relation to the grant. And this is what you've been working for for years. I mean, to finally have connection to two Class 1 freight rail carriers with, with connections into the park, this is what this board has been working on for years, and now it's knocking on the door. And I also want to at least note for the record, uh, this ready grant piece was extremely competitive, and their, uh, Matt and his shop deserve great kudos uh, for helping to land that grant. That was significant. They had to uh, uh, had to essentially match with local private sector investment in order to be able to induce the Northwest Forum. Northwest Forum had applications from dozens. And for us to be in that uh, in that initial batch was a huge gap for LaPorte County, and so I wanted to mention that on the record as well. Great job. Mr. Rosenbaum? Can we just get the amount that the ready grant is because you didn't you we didn't share the amount we get the what's brand. the 600 here hold on 600. i want everybody to know uh, that it's significant it's yeah not just it's um number. well the the design of the ready grant if you look at what we put together the majority of the funds both matching and the grant are used for actual construction so we avoided soft cost because the way that we've gone out and sought bids have to do with our ability to utilize our switcher uh, agreement right now and Phil Vicenda from from Barnes is going to verify that for me and, and of course Shaw will, will weigh in on that but we believe that because we've already gone through a public process related to this particular project we're able to use them as the switcher and they're very comfortable with uh, serving in that role. Um, while I'm flipping through the total grand amount of this project is 4.4766 million um, Kingsbury Elevator has committed 1.5 million. JBC Rail has committed, uh, I got 575, 375,000 rather, um, and we have two million dollars that would either come from local funds or TIF to do the roadways when and if we do it. Um, the total ready a grant uh, amount award was 600 and 1,600 dollars. Um, some of that is juice that goes back to the forum for project grant management. So I think we have a net of five hundred and thirty-five thousand uh, dollars for the project. Five hundred thirty-five thousand saved, Good. saved or not done or you know ignored. So, and the nice Thank part you. is you have the private sector participating. You know those guys were never going to do this on their. I shouldn't say never. It was that likely they'd do it on their own, and. Uh, so that's the uh, mr president if i could just make a comment uh matt and i are both on the northwest Indiana forum board and trust me when i tell you that they had hundreds of applications for this grant money that from unite the region that the governor had put in position with the forum and uh it was not an easy task and and the way i look at this uh grant for kingsbury this is the spark that's going to make it take off for the cn and I'm very pleased to hear you talk about the CX Railroad being connected also because this is what we've been waiting for. I remember shaking Joe Donnelly's hand 
when he first got in office 15, 16, 18 years ago, we thought it was going to happen then. Oh, yeah. And I know that me and Terry Larson have been on this board probably longer than anybody. And we all thought it was going to happen 15 years ago. So one, one thing I think we need to do, Mr. President, we need to uh, really put a big pat in the back for our economic development group with Tony and Matt and their team and what they have been doing uh, throughout LaPorte County is is something that I haven't experienced and I've been on this board probably two or three terms and uh, it's the best that I've seen it since we've been in business. Definitely. So I absolutely agree. We owe them a great uh, bit of gratitude. I know we pay them but it's sometimes it's more than just a paycheck. These guys take the extra time to go out and make sure this stuff happens. So thank you very much for that. Definitely. And even and don't leave out Mary Jane. Sure. So that includes Mary you, I'm Jane. Right. Yeah. You're a part of it too. So. Yeah. I said team. Right. Uh, so with that, is do we need appro to get approval to sign this? Yeah, and I, I think, it, 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 I don't know if you'd execute it. We were talking about retroactive approval or simply putting it on the record here with execution today. So that's fine. I haven't signed it yet. Motion to approve the acceptance of the ready grant. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Good job. Tony, where'd Bailey go? <laughs> no, no, where are you? Uh, Real brief. Right. <laughs> you know how to do that. Did I say that out loud? Did I say that out loud? I'm Mr. President, he knows members I'm of the joking. commission, I've known Tony forever. Yep. Thank you. It's truly my pleasure. We were going to host uh, Bailey to do a high-level overview of the October seventh workshop that was held by uh, the Laporte County Rural Broadband Task Force and. Quite frankly, the thought in the office was to uh, respectfully present to the Redevelopment Commission so that you're fully up to speed and understanding the amount of energy and effort that's going into chasing some of this federal uh, funding that's being identified for rural uh, broadband. Uh, that Bailey would have done a... Th She's right here. Right here. Oh. I heard yeah. Sorry, I came back. Sorry. Well, it... Cut it short. Sorry. Outstanding. Yeah, let me pull yeah. this up. So Bailey will do, uh, that way you're able to see the, the, true, uh, the true energy that's going into and, and the depth and breadth of participation amongst all these volunteers right. across the entire county yep. that need to be recognized. So uh, once Bailey does that, I'll, uh, I'll conclude and we appreciate your support. So, yes, Bailey McGrath from the Office of Community and Economic Development. So, um, Tony had asked that we do this presentation for the Redevelopment Commission because we're changing the conversation around broadband from it's a luxury to it's a critical piece of infrastructure. And who better to talk to uh, infrastructure about than the Redevelopment Commission? So, the Broadband Task Force, as some of you are aware, we had a presentation to the community on October 7th. Um, we had a large amount of our task force attend. Um, so we do have two slides of the task force and some of the various people that are represented on the task force, including um, like KVREMC, which is a critical piece of electrical infrastructure down south. Um, our public libraries with their uh, facilities, what they are able to offer in terms of internet, as well as all of the elected officials who help us push this forward. So we have a large amount of task force members. If you guys want to learn more about them, see who they are, it is up to date on our website and you're able to see who they're uh, represented by. Tony, if you can click forward a couple slides. So we did cover the uh, vision and mission at our October 7th meeting. Without a vision or a mission, we, any organization needs to have it in order for them to move forward and know what their ultimate goals are. Ours is to be able to put, long story short, fiber to every home in the county. Fiber, we have found, is the gold standard. It's your absolute surefire way to always be able to download things, always be able to upload and communicate for your business, for school, for personal use, all of it. That's the only way to get it done. So 
Next slide, please. I don't know why the arrow keys aren't working. That's funny. Anyway, in 2019, the task force did do a survey and we did learn a lot in that survey. And part of that is how to conduct a proper one to make sure that we get the right data to be able to submit that to the state to show that the FCC maps are in fact incorrect and that we need to have better data to show we aren't served. We need the better information. So after we got a lot of that data, we were able to chase a lot of grants on the next slide. Uh, the, there are five different grants that became available as a result of COVID and just from the state, knowing that we need to expand broadband everywhere. Um, in our chasing those grants, we learned, like any piece of infrastructure, you have to have a plan. You have to know what's the cost. And the Healthcare Foundation, next slide please, helped us to fund a study with Yates Engineering to get the total cost of what is it going to cost us to get fiber to every single home. And we learned it's not cheap. Infrastructure is not cheap. Um, but we did see success after that, um, knowing what those costs are and where we can start to point the development at. Um, some of the most notable is the Next Level Connections grant getting uh, a large amount of money into ISB hands to make sure we can get fiber in the ground. And on the next slide, we have, sorry, I keep leaning in so I can act, you can actually hear me. Um, the green boxes are where a lot of that fiber infrastructure is going. And yes, it's a small portion, but it's progress. Um, we have the second largest geographic county in the state of Indiana. It's going to take us some time. But to see this sort of progress so far, we're encouraged. And we're able to point to the survey results to see where we need to go next. Um, on our last slide here, the Farm Bureau did do a presentation at our uh, October 7th workshop discussing the need for data. Their data, they have found um, across the state that they want to have six months or newer data to call it usable data. So we are still working with residents to have them give us data, have them give us their information so we can continue to point towards the needed areas and for the for us to use it in our grants and really tell a compelling story. So part of those, yes. I have a quick question. Yeah. How was the spots, the green areas that you said that are going to be completed or targeted? In progress, yes. How were those, how was that decided? So that's from uh, various ISPs and from uh, KVRMC based on their expansion plans from the money that they've received from grants and their own uh, choi their own choices to expand. Um, we were able to share some of the survey data that we had. They were able to look at what their next three to five year plans look like and start to meld those together to see what's the next logical step for them to grow out of, say, Laporte South, or is the next logical step to follow Johnson Road up north? And they were able to start piecing that together and eventually it'll blanket the county in a nice spider web. So there's a there's it's it's more of a strategic plan based on the other infrastructure that's going in with these different companies. You know, I mean it it's not a couple guys sitting in the back room going, Hey, you know, I got a buddy over on Johnson, let's run it over to him. I Wouldn't mean, that be nice? No, it, it is I just want part everybody of a strategic understand plan. we're it's not a bunch of people just deciding, you know, we like this area better, <laughs> but we're trying to do it as cost effective and make the money go as far so we can get to as many right. people as possible. Um, because so. if we were just to run a line from here to you know, Fish Lake, it's going to be quite expensive. But if they're able to hit some other places before they get there and make it cost effective, that's their, yep. that's our goal, is to make yep. the money stretch as far as possible. Great. So, Thank you. Tony. Yeah, and I would just conclude, Bailey did a great job. And your question, Mr. President, is right on target. That is, the state recommended 10 steps to maximize your community's level of success. That's why we handed this out. The first item on the agenda is form a broadband task force in your community. It, it's fortuitous that in 2019, Commissioner Matias, uh, myself, we knew that it was going to become critical to be fiber ready. We knew it would be a very heavy lift. And when I say heavy lift, it's that's an understatement. This is, it's such a large problem and, and there's many 
uh, types of solu technological solutions out there. But as Bailey said, uh, fiber is the gold standard. We, we know the federal government's identifying resources for rural America. S us having the broadband task force, what it does is it positions us. Uh, you know, we, your question about uh, how are these routes identified, the state of Indiana, each time it did an okra phase one grant, then the phase two and phase three, by the time they got to phase three, their first approach is let's ask the private sector to step up. In LaPorte County, we had three companies, private companies, step up. They're doing the heavy tack, block and tackling right now, and they were successful. Third time's a charm, and uh, MJ played a, a, a heavy role in that. We, we got that grant done, and they're out there deploying, but we know there are still holes left, significant holes. And by us having seven of these 10 uh, checklist items already achieved and us working closely with the state, we believe we're in a very good position to continue to maximize not only that relationship, but uh, to be garnering their expertise, working closely with Purdue down West Lafayette, Dr. Uh, Gallardo that helped guide us on the mission and vision statements continues to be active in our broadband task force. And that we're, we're blessed, quite frankly. So I just wanted to right. not go on too long, but to update your, right. your commission. It, uh, it, so you knew it, what it's was great because this is going to position Laporte County for whether it's businesses or people that want to come relocate to Laporte County, this this puts us ahead of the game. So it's, it's great. It. And your Kingsbury Industrial Park, uh, not only did Surfair step up and serve that park, but you had uh, Comcast that uh, came in it's investing substantially, and that is that redundancy is what corporate America looks for. Not only to have a gold standard delivering that fiber service. But a backup. They they typically want a backup. It's right. not cost. It's we want to have assurance that mm -hmm. uh, we can do business in any environment, and we're we're trying to lead the way in that regard. So we appreciate your support. Great. Thank you. Any other business? Motion to. Adjourn. I'll stay brief. Oh. Okay. Wait. I just have something really quick. Okay. Our regional sewer board met last week. I just want to update this board because, as you know, from the uh, IFA, we received like $35 million in, in a reimbursable loan and um, low, interest, low interest loan and reimbursable loan. Um, so we're in the process of bonding now, and we hired JPR to do the engineering, and that project's going to hook up approximately 1,000 homes in all Saucony, Hudson Lake, and it's scheduled to start construction in 2024. Wow. Cool. Great. You guys are moving forward. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Good job.